<coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our morning time of devotion here on Monday. And as we do so, we uh, give thanks again for another week that the Lord has provided for us. And let us go now unto him in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for you are our God and we are your people. And you have guided us into another day to serve you. And we ask, dear God, that as you give us opportunity to witness the gospel, that you will give us the right words to use. That no matter what situation we might be in personally, we know the riches of your grace and of your mercy. And dear God, we pray that that would be our strength this day and this week. As we prepare to come again once more unto the Lord's day uh, this coming month. And we again ask that you would use your word, dear God to strengthen us, to open our eyes to see more clearly what it is that you would have us to do. For you, dear God, are wisdom and truth. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning, again, we turn uh, to Mark chapter 10. Now we're going to step back a little bit because for some reason, somehow I skipped over this section. So we're going to go and look at Mark 10 verses 1 through 12, which are Christ's teaching on divorce. So let's go there again to the word of the Lord. Then Jesus arose from there and came to the region of Judea by the other side of the Jordan. And multitudes gathered to him again, and as he was accustomed, he taught them again. The Pharisees came and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Testing him. And Jesus answered and said to them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses permitted a man to write her certificate of divorce and to dismiss her. And Jesus answered and said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. And that in the house, his disciples also asked him again about this same matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Amen. Now, this teaching on divorce and marriage is central to so much of what's happening today in the church, not to mention in the water culture. What is Jesus doing here? First of all, he sees and knows, as Mark tells us, that the Pharisees' question is not coming from a place where they are seriously looking for an answer. And that's one of the reasons why Jesus, at the beginning here, asked them what Moses says. Because he knows that they hold Moses, not just in high regard, but as the authority. And also, Jesus is testifying and showing to us and the Pharisees that Christ also understands Moses to be an authority. And why is that? Because, of course, Christ is the one who gave Moses the law. Christ, being the second person of the Holy Trinity, was present when the law was written. And the law, of course, is a reflection of the very character of God. And the law of Moses did not permit a man to divorce a woman for any reason that he felt like. Now, later on, Jewish law would allow. For whatever reason a man would, would, would come up with, you know, the wife burns the toast in the morning. That's reason enough for divorce. But of course, that's not what the Bible teaches, and that's not what Christ teaches, and it's most certainly not what Moses teaches. And that's one of the reasons why adultery is brought up here at the end of the passage. For Christ and for the scriptures, there are only two lawful reasons for divorce. One is adultery. If the covenant bond is broken by a violation of the seventh commandment, then divorce is lawful. Now notice what I said there. It's lawful. The other reason given is abandonment. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If, for whatever reason, you're married to an unbeliever, 
and the unbeliever no longer wants to be married to a believer and abandons you, spiritually abandons you, or if you're married, uh, when you're married, you believe that you're marrying a man who believes in the Lord Jesus and he apostatizes from the faith and wants nothing to do with you and abandons the marriage bed, then that is lawful. And again, it's important to understand that word, lawful. Divorce is never required in the Bible. Just like any other transgression of the law, the goal should always be reconciliation. Now, reconciliation is not always possible. And reconciliation itself can, be, can become an idol to look towards. Sometimes divorce is necessary. But Jesus here is making it clear that divorce is never good. It's never good because that's not how God designed marriage to be. God designed marriage to be as Christ lays it out here. God made them male and female from the beginning. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So when they are no longer two, but one flesh, therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. Again, God is the one who joins man and woman together. And it's only by the lawful obedience to God's command that they can be separated. Man has no authority to come up with variant understandings of what's a lawful divorce. Only God. Only what is written in the scriptures is where we find what is acceptable for the dissolution of the marriage bond. And this has to be the standard by which all divorce in the church is measured. And obviously the same goes for the wider culture, but we need to take care of our own house first. There's two other things that come up when we talk about marriage, especially in this context. One of the things that Jesus is also making clear and he does this with the woman at the well, is that it is unlawful for a man and a woman to live together and act as if they are married. For that is kind of the uh, pre-example of the unlawfulness of divorce. Just as it is wrong to divorce for any reason that you feel like, it's also wrong to engage in marital practice that does not have the promise and the hand of God on it from the beginning. Again, man and woman are not to cohabitate, is the modern way to say this, but the scriptures understand that we are not to pretend marriage. Marriage is a bond, a vow, taken up by a man and a woman in the sight of the Lord Jesus, and it must be consummated in that way. You know, not to get too graphic in a morning devotion, but that's why all premarital sex is sin, because it's pretending to be something that it's not. That act of love is to only be engaged in by a man and a woman who are married in the sight of the Lord. Because it's not just because uh, that's the way God designed it, that's obvious, but it is again an act that we engage in, in the promise of the Lord. And if we take the Lord out of it and reduce it only to a fleshly and physical thing, then we rob it of its fullness and of its joy and of its purpose. And this is obviously one of the problems with homosexual relationships. As they do not meet the basic standard of male and female that we see laid down here in Mark 10. And so it's important for us to hear what Jesus is saying, to listen to what he is saying, and observe what Jesus is saying. Because again, Jesus came not to destroy or change the law of God. He came to fulfill it. 
And he's telling the Pharisees, hey, if you want to be the kind of people that you claim to be, if you want to be righteous, if you want to be holy before the Lord, then listen to what Moses has said. Don't come up with your own ideas. Don't come up with your own legalistic understandings of things. Listen to what Moses has said, for that's what I have said. And so, brothers and sisters, as we close out this time in Mark 10, we need to understand again the beauty of Christian marriage and the beauty of what marriage is because God himself has laid it out and called it very good for the blessing of both men and women. May the Lord be with you this week. May he comfort you this week and may he guide you into all righteousness for his name's sake. Take care and God bless.